the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey everybody, God bless you. I want to go ahead and give you a quick uh, uh, synopsis of what we talked about today. And I, and I, I changed the topic because I've started off with the kind of topic called to be two types of churches, the those that obey Christ and those that disobey Christ. And I changed it more to line up with the scriptures so that people, if they're going to discuss it and debate it, they can at least line up with what scripture I'm coming from. And I'm coming from Romans chapter 8. I'm talking about verse 6. We're talking about being being caught in the mind of spiritual light. So this is what I want to do, and and because what I've seen so much, and I think most of them agree now, we have become so comfortable. You know, I can't say we have, because I see based on history that we have done card we've been acting on the cardinal flesh and cardinal reality for a very long time. But it's called two types of Christians, spiritual mind and cardinal mind. That verse that goes to that is Romans 8, 6. So when you talk to your pastor and you talk to your minister, you talk to your fellow believers, you ask you, you what I want you to do is assess whether you are cardinal. Are you cardinal Christians? And then what I do encourage you to do, what we talked about today was Google, go do word search, go to the library, have you want to say, look up the atrocities first of religion, religious people or religion and how much religion has uh, driven people to do mass killing and murders and torture and some very inhumane things. And then if you want to talk about the, the, the our Christianity itself, then you go and look up look up the atrocities of Christians and you'll see that we, we got to, and you know it, starting from the crusade all the way to the transatlantic slave trade, all the way to the slavery all the way through the Jim Crow laws and all those things and all the way to this day we see where people have dehumanized people to justify the behavior. Now we're seeing it even between political parties where somebody is sitting there just because you're part of this party uh, we're going to hurt you, we're going to kill you, we're going to dehumanize you. Both sides to a degree but one side in particular is really putting down uh, a lot of rhetoric of talking about physically hurting somebody. Uh, even in Christianity, we talked about the fact that the evangelicals and so forth talking about abortion with the with the the inciting people to go blow up abortion clinics and and then put uh, pregnant women or women who commit abo ador uh, abortion put them in jail. You know, it, it's just a lot of things that people would do in the name of their faith, their religion, and in our case, Christianity. So we need to fit there and say, do we need to operate and try to deal with things from the cardinal level or from the spiritual level? You know, God is the spirit in John 4, 24. God is the spirit, and those who worship him must worship his spirit in truth. And we've been called to preach the good news, not be militant. And we talked about the fact is that even uh, Christianity did not start off, nor is it nor are the teachings of Christ about violence. But when Rome took over and the church was accepted as the same religion, it became a banner also to be more militant. And that's where the crusade came in. And the viciousness and the, the, the terrible thing that was done in the crusade, look it up and read it for yourself. We, as believers, we, it's time for us to let our light shine and show people who are the real Christians. Meaning, and I'm talking about spiritual Christians. We have spiritual-minded Christians, not cardinal-minded. So real quick, I want to go ahead and read the, uh, the scripture I'm coming from, and then we'll, we'll go ahead and get into the study. So right here, like I said, two types of Christians, spiritual-minded and cardinal-minded, coming from Romans 8, 6. But let's go ahead into those scriptures. I want to read it real quick. Uh, it's like this. Romans 1, 8, I mean, Romans 8, 1, all the way to 8, 6, is what I like to read as, as the foundation where I'm coming from. He said, there therefore no condemnation in them which are in Christ Jesus, walk after the flesh, but after the spirit. 
For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and it was weak to the flesh, God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that after the spirit the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind, listen y'all, is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So the date on the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. But if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken, make alive your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Now, what I'm trying to say, if you look at what we just read, and you go back and read it for yourself, all the things from the lynching, all the things from the slave trade, all the things from the crusade, all the things leading them to the day. If you call yourself a Christian, if you use any cardinal weapons, any fleshly tools to try to make somebody be a Christian, to try to make somebody line up to be righteous, to make somebody to be what you think they're supposed to be as far as being holy, you can't do it because cardinal tools does not make you holy. Is only the spirit, the righteousness of Christ that's given to you as a gift. And if it's given to you as a gift, and the only thing for other people to do is receive the gift or continue to be what they are. But you are not cardinal. Remember that, amen? I hope you enjoyed the study. And listen to these introductions more than anything else because that's what we're trying to come to. Let's stop being cardinal Christians and let's stop being spiritual Christians. Amen? God bless you. God loves you. I will go ahead and make the, uh, the session available next, buy them up in uh, A, B, and C, and D. And also, I'll go ahead and make sure that you uh, get these out as soon as possible for you can digest them one day at a time or every other day. And also, remember this, subscribe. And, and make comments, too. I'll receive them. I, I mean, at least I'll, I'll read them. <laughs> God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye. So, so I don't have a problem with the, the Ten Commandments. But the, the, the point is that a lot of people, the Jewish people, their relationship with God. But I'm sitting there saying that if you have determined that you can dehumanize people, I talked about it earlier, so that you can commit adultery, that you can kill, that you can be a false witness, that you can covet to the point that if they're successful, you know, the people that you dehumanized, the people that you told not to read, and made sure they couldn't read, and then they have the fact you get mad because they can't read, you get mad because they are progressing. You're doing everything to, to, to contrary to the will of God to meet your man objective, opposed to the ultimate objective, which is eternal life. But that's, that's, well, if you don't believe in eternal life, then you're right. You know, why do you want to call yourself a Christian? I don't know why. Why don't you, why don't you just be real? If you don't want to be a Christian, don't be a Christian. Because you know, I force it. The, the big difference us is we ain't forcing you to be a Christian. So, think about that as we move forward. But let's go into some scriptures. And you know, the reason, and like I said, my slide I always talked about, you see it right, right to the, to, uh, my left, which it says Nehemiah 8 8. So they read in the book and the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. My objective is for you to understand the reading. My objective is for you to sit there and say, you can be mindful of the things of man and mindful of the things of God. You make that choice. All right? So as we go into it, let's go into the scriptures. Uh, we talk about the fact is that the title, once again, is, is the fact is, are there two. And I may change the title because it's, 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 I think it's a, a mindset. It's two types of mindset. 
Matter of fact, the scripture covers it with says spiritual mind and carnal mind. Right? Two types of Christians: those who obey Christ and those who disobey Christ. And the title doesn't make you a Christian, but yet people take these titles. I mean, that's another way. Two types of title Christians, right? Anyway, the bottom line is, if you profess to be a Christian, but you don't obey Christ, then you are profess to be a Christian who disobey Christ. It, it, it's not about your political party. It's, you know, just the bottom line is not about your political party. I just sit there and I'll, I'll glance up at the news where they sit there and said that um, somebody confronted uh, Pence about Trump saying that he should have broke the law because Trump told him to. See, once again, we either go by the commandment of God, the word of God, or even our constitution, or we go by some other doctrine that's not good, but yet weak that and said to do, right? So what type of Christian are you? And you know, I put down here the fact is just to, to restate this to people who call themselves Christians, you know, there's there's whatever politics you're in, if the politics you're in is the color of your skin, the doctrine of men does not line up with 14.6, which says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Look at this. No man comes to the Father but by me. You know, we like a lot of talk about this pearly gate, Peter at the gate. Uh-uh. It, it, it ain't going to be no Peter at the gate. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but me. You want to make, matter of fact, in Israel, we make those jokes about we use a Peter and a few other people because we want to use man, right? We, 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 can, we can talk to man. But the bottom line is, it's talking to Christ. Christ has said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No one comes to follow but my name. So as we move forward and talk about this discussion as you meditate on it, you ask yourself, who are you mighty for? And who are you obeying? He gave us, he taught us, just like he taught the disciples. The disciples asked that question. What teach us how to pray? Christ taught this was written down for all of us to use. And you can sit there and you get some old, some, some nappy head preacher that should tell you that, no, it's only for certain people. No, it's for all of us to use. That's why it's put in the Bible, all right? As, as to use as a manner, not as a specific way of praying, but a manner of praying. A manner started in Matthew 6, verse 9. After this manner, therefore pray ye. And you ain't got to do it in a way, but what he's saying is when you approach God in prayer, you be very specific in who you're talking to because there's a lot of things we pray into. And once again, I'll go right back it again. Some people pray into themselves, some people pray for politics, doctrines, and everything else. But when we're praying to God, he's saying is be specific. Our, our Father, which is in heaven. Huh? He said this, I ain't talking about what's in your political party, I ain't talking about in your country, your state, or whatever. I'm talking about the Father's in heaven. And I want you to hallow be thy name, meaning honor him, and say that you are awesome, you are great, you are awful, right? 10, thy kingdom come. He's talking about the fact is that the kingdom of God it's a system that overrides all other kingdoms, all other conditions and doctrines, meaning his kingdom is above the political parties. His kingdom is above the color of your skin. His kingdom is above nationality. When we look at it, that's, that's what we're going for, right? His kingdom. Thy will be done. Not your political body. You can have conference all day you want. You can have conference every year. You can have conference, you can have primary, you can have 
elections, but it's his will, not your will. If you gotta sit there and, and lie and cheat and deceive and try to oppress people's votes and everything else, you're not doing God's will. You can't be, that's the will of man. But the fact is, thy will, we talk about the fact that what in his will is in his word. Find it in his word. Use his word as a guidance. Thy will be done. Where? In earth. Listen. See, that's what I'm saying. That when you have political ideology, when you have man's doctrine, God's will is supposed to be for you and for me to trump over those things. That's what the that's what the will, his will be done in earth as it is in heaven. He said, give us this day, meaning it's a daily thing, a daily prayer, a daily coming after me coming to God after the manner in which he gave us to pray. The daily bread is the word of God, the Bible. That's why he wants you to study, to show yourself approved. There's life in, in the word of God. Because I guarantee you, if you get off the word of God and start focusing on the thing, you're going to go, you go in a very radical, different direction. In most cases, you go to the point where you don't have any. <laughs> You, 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 you don't have any, uh, uh, you don't have a chance. Look, you don't have a chance in hell <laughs> to get out of hell if you want to go any other way. Follow the will of the Father. He said, and, and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debt to him. See, you, you know how people will teach you and, and allow you to justify it's okay for you not to have uh, to forgive somebody. And, and did you know the hypocrisy of I mean, it is the fact that you're asking for forgiveness that you don't want to give forgiveness? You ever notice that hypocrisy in that? You you want mercy, but you don't give mercy. You want you want love, but you don't give love. You don't give grace towards your fellow man. That that's that's what you that's what you do. So you gotta you gotta ask yourself. What must I do to be saved? And I guarantee you is his will. His way of forgiving other people. Because like I said, if you want to be forgiven, you forgive. And I know you're going to sit there and say, I'm just, I, forgiving means I'm forgiving you for what you did. I'm not forgetting what you did. I'm not going to put myself in a position where you can do it again. You know, if you, it's a murderer. Well, I'll forgive you for what you did. But you need to go to you need to go to prison because you you kill somebody and if we keep you out on the street you gonna kill somebody else again, right? That that that's the whole point. You discriminate though, and you try to put everybody in the same box. You're not doing the will of the Father. You're not forgiven. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That's what we want, right? We want to be led not into temptation, and we want to be delivered from evil. Because once again, he said, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for every man. We got to focus on that as far as our life. And 14 and 15 is something he re-emphasized even after he told them how to pray. He re-emphasized this one. Of all the manner of which to pray, that one about forgive us of our debts when we give our debt us. Where in 14 it said, for if you give men their trespasses, the heavenly Father also forgive you. But if you give me not the trespassers, then who your father will give you. So how many people who have, and Christ is even telling you, you call yourself a Christian, he's saying, is my hands are tied concerning this matter. If you don't forgive, then my father in heaven won't forgive you. You got to forgive other people their trespassers. That's what he says. First Timothy 2.4 says, who will have all men to be saved to come unto the knowledge of the truth. That's what his desire is, for all of us to be saved. So, you you know, those back in the slavery days, right, the people were thinking, whatever you call it, you know, call people, human, dehumanized people, call them property. So, you know, he said it's will for all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. But some of you said to say, no, I don't want that to happen, but that's what happened. 
That's what his will is for all men to be saved, regardless of how you are. You can call a man a property. You can call a man a slave. You can call a man a black. You can call a man a white. You can call a man whatever you want to call him. But the only authority you have is not concerning people. You can't discriminate against people. You can label people all you want, but they're still people. You know what I mean? A rose by any other rose name is still called, is still a rose. Because it smells like a rose. A human being, regardless of how you want to demonize a person, change a person, belittle a person, try to make somebody inferior, because you, you feel that that's something that you have authority to do, doesn't change the fact that they're human beings. And that's, you know, I don't care what they, who they are, what they do, they're still a human being. And you respect that, because you need to respect it for yourself. But you, you can, you know, like I said, there's eternal life or eternal death. You choose, right? Romans 14, 12 is, so then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Every one individually shall give an account of himself to God. Now you can you can you can you can sit there and and you can say I, I'm gonna I'm gonna follow my party. I'm gonna follow my 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 <laughs> whatever group you follow that 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 advocate doing contrary to the will of God. But you and everybody else in that group will give an account to God. Now, my friend said to say, you don't know, so that you can, and then for you feel you got to count to nobody. And maybe that's the, the, the basket you want to be in, in a basket where you don't have to give an account to God or anybody else. You just do what you want to do. If that's the position you want to take, you take. But I'm going to tell you that scripture is very clear. Uh, every last one of us will give an account of himself to God. Many of us are trying to give an account to people, validate ourselves and our actions to people, when in reality it is, this is what I'm telling Romans 14, 12, every last one of us. See, you, got, you, you, you know this and I know this too, right? Those who did the lynching, those who did the slaving, those who did all the bad things to people, and we talk about this, see, some people say, well, slavery was God knew about slavery then. But everything you did to a slave, you raped them, you murdered them, you killed, you lied about them, and everything else, you got to give an account to God. Not you personally. Those people who did it, who were now gone, they had to give an account to God. Could have been right thing that he was 9, 27. It's a point of every man to die, then judgment. So all those people have been judged. The question is, your children and you have not been judged. So what you going to do? You're going to follow the will of God. You're going to take Christ as a Savior because if without Him, you, you, you have no advocate before the Father. So that's why He wants to, you to remind yourself in Romans 14, 12, so then every one of us should give an account of himself to God. Just, just take that what is worth, amen? All right. Now, we already covered these slides earlier. Let's go in this parable of the week. But I talk about this two types of Christians, right? In reality, one is a contradiction in turn. So one Christian, one type of Christian, there's another type that calls himself a Christian. But don't do the word of God. And the kind of reminds you this parable of the weeds. Check this out. Matthew 13, 24. Another parable he put forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemies came and sowed terrors among the wheat and went his way. And when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, 
there appeared the tares also. So the servant of the household came and said to him, Sir, didst thou, didst not thou so good seed in the field? For what then has it tares? He said unto them, An enemy has done this. The servant said unto him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while you gather the tear, you root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of harvest I will say to the reaper, Gather together first the tares, and bind them in bundles, and burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. You, you see the fact is that the, the, the gospel, the teaching of Christ, Christianity, or the way, or believers in Christ, however you want to call it, <laughs> grew up with tears of those who are carnal-minded, those who are spiritual-minded. And so many have been cardinal mind. But one of the blessings about this ministry, the gospel is still being preached regardless of those who are mindful of men opposed to those who are mindful of things of God. Amen? And I, what type of church are you? I want to sit there and invite you to listen to this study carefully. And I also want to invite you to look up the history of religion. And I'm talking about look at the atrocities of religion. Look at the atrocity of the Christian church. Look them up because there's a lot. And why I'm saying that, the Bible says that a tree is known by its fruit. What fruit are you bearing? That's what we want to discuss. And, and keep in mind, you can always change, revert back, repent, and follow the will of God. So even if you have a history, bad things, you can always come back to the throne of grace because that's what that gospel is all about. So I want you to take time, listen to the study, analyze it for yourself, and ask what type of church are you. We got to the point where we actually used, went to the book of Revelation to the church of Laodicea and what that church was like. And the question is, are you like that in church? But if you believe and you want to believe, follow his will. He gave you the Lord, he gave you the Lord's commandment so you can follow his will daily. Amen. All right. God bless you. I see you. Don't forget to subscribe. And and I will break these down into segments A, B, C, D, and whatever it takes to finish it up. But I just want you to analyze. And like I said, I just want to put out there to you. If you decide that you don't want to believe Christ, if you decide that you don't believe in eternal life, that's a choice you make. And we respect your choice because you make that choice. All we all tell you is that everyone will give, every, look, my scripture said by faith. That's all I can go by faith in his word. Is that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. So, you say it now, or you say it when you leave this world. That's up to you. God bless you, but I chose to do it now. Make that decision now. I encourage everybody else to make that decision now as well. God bless you. I hope you enjoyed the segment, the study that we did this Sunday on the 9th of July. And say, look, yes, sure, Jesus is Lord. Amen? Amen. God bless you, and I'll see you when I see you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you.